Hey, we're in the ARS TV garage today. I got a couple guests in to help me with a new project. I've got Corey and Joe from Autometer. Joe, why don't you explain what we're doing today? Yeah, hey, thanks, Amy. Uh, so, the Nova's seen a bit of track time recently, and we've been relying on some factory instrumentation up to this point. So, today we're going to take out the factory instrument cluster. We're going to replace that with a set of high performance Autometer American muscle gauges uh, in one of our direct fit drop in panels. Um, so, Corey is here as our technical advisor. He is a senior technician on the uh, Autometer staff. And, uh, we're gonna go through and get her, uh, get her kitted up. Great, let's do it. So in our kit here, uh, the five gauge kit, which is the programmable electronic speedometer uh, and short sweep electric oil pressure, water temperature, fuel level, and voltmeter. Um, those come in one kit. We've added a matching tachometer uh, to the setup here. Many years ago, it was, uh, it was considered commonplace to you know take a whole saw to the dash and start sawing through things or fabricating a piece of aluminum but in order to step up the the appearance and make the project considerably easier uh, we've got this great replacement panel from the guys at classic dash uh, this is made to drop right into the factory location it's a perfect fit for autometer gauges uh, really nice fit and finish excellent build quality uh, and we think it's just going to look terrific so as you can see what we started with here, the, the Nova was uh, obviously a fairly serious performance machine to begin with. So we had the nice little under dash kit with the vitals of the engine being displayed, your oil pressure, your water temp, and the voltmeter, uh, as well as the, uh, the ever popular autometer street tack. Uh, but it's important when you're out on the track to get those gauges up and visible into a place that's very easy to see when you're going down the road. So that as much as anything uh, influence our decision to, uh, to go with the full American muscle setup. So we took our dash kit here and we've already gone ahead, installed the gauges and pre-wired everything. Uh, one of the things you want to pay attention to when you do this is to leave a little bit of extra slack uh, on the wires in case uh, for any reason you ever have to remove the gauge panel. Uh, just makes it much easier to be serviceable in the future. Uh, we've also added uh, turn signal indicators to the setup as well. Um, and yeah, as you can see, really this, this panel just looks great. Everything was incredibly simple to go in. So we've gone ahead already and installed the sending units onto the vehicle. Now the uh, American Muscle Gauge Kit comes with this nice little uh, speedometer sensor. Uh, this bolts onto the uh, tail shaft of the transmission. We move on to the uh, water temperature sender and the oil pressure sender. And those are both going on the uh, back of our small block there. We've got a boss on the intake manifold uh, where we've dropped the water temperature sender on. And then right behind that, you see the uh, oil pressure sending unit. Each of these are a one wire connection. One thing to note when installing these, uh, because it is a single wire and it's a self grounding sending unit, you want to avoid the use of Teflon tape. Uh, they are a tapered pipe thread fitting. In theory, they should be completely leak free. We like to use just a little dab of liquid Teflon thread sealant. Tiny bit will get the job done for you, provide you insurance against leaks, uh, and you don't run the risk of uh, interfering with that sending unit's path to ground. Uh, in the instance that you are uh, seeing a lower than expected reading from the gauge, it's most likely due to resistance to ground on the side of the sending unit. So stay away from the Teflon tape. It's gonna make the installation much easier and everything will work properly the first time. So all of the sending units that you need to uh, complete a typical installation are included uh, with this kit, including uh, this nice adjustable uh, fuel level sending unit. Uh, now, if you already have a fuel level sender in the unit, now, like this vehicle does here, uh, we actually got a gauge that was calibrated to the original zero to 90 ohm GM fuel level sensor. But if you don't have a fuel level sensor, it comes with it, and that's a 240 ohm empty to 33 ohm full, just kind of a universal aftermarket range. You can see we got the, the five hole mounting flange on the top. This is the most common type you'll see. Um, we also have an adapter available for six hole applications. So what we're doing here is uh, we're going to pull the original factory instrument cluster out. Now on this model, uh, we do need to drop the column uh, to clear that out of the way as it's uh, a little bit tight in there. So Corey's going to move the column out of the way and uh, cluster should pop out fairly easily. 
So one of the interesting uh, things on this original cluster here is if we look on the back, uh, the wiring is all labeled, you know, dark green, dark blue, light blue. Uh, and if you want to test to see which one does what, you can actually shine a flashlight through the back of the unit to see what socket does uh, what socket does what. So uh, nice, uh, nice little piece of engineering that the general provided for us there. Everything removed, we are actually going to get rid of a number of these factory light sockets here. And you'll see what Corey does uh, when he clips them. He actually folds them over and puts a little heat shrink tubing uh, on them uh, to keep that uh, nice and safe. So what we're looking at here is the factory instrument cluster had a generator light. When you look on the back, this is a brown wire. So going to the cluster here, we've got a brown wire with a pink. The pink is power, the brown serves as a ground. So anytime the alternator is not charging, this brown wire acts as a ground, thus lighting up the light, indicating that your charging system is not charging. Once you start the engine, this energizes the alternator and that brown wire is no longer ground. It now serves as a power. So when you take power on the brown, power on the pink, that actually does nothing, thus causing the light to go out. If you were to cut this out, out of here, out of circuit, and just uh, dead end your wires, tape them up, eliminate them, what, what could potentially happen is either your charging system is not going to charge, or you run into a situation where it doesn't charge until you blip the throttle or rev the engine once or twice, which then ends up energizing the char charging system. One of the things you'll notice is when we clip these out, uh, one, we do leave uh, a little bit of pigtail left uh, rather than taking it right to the base. Uh, that way, if we want to reinstall them in anything at any point in time, they're still usable. Uh, and that keeps the factory cluster uh, able to be uh, used in another vehicle. Uh, additionally, we stagger them so when you're uh, actually making connections on them, uh, it's much easier uh, to uh, solder or crimp connect onto those. And folks, please be careful uh, using uh, open flame anywhere in a vehicle. Technically, a heat gun would be the right tool for the job here, but as Corey is a trained professional, uh, we allow him to, uh, to improvise somewhat. Okay, now I've got most of the wiring cleaned up here. I've taken some heat shrink, put it over the ends of the wires after folding the wire over, keep it all intact, uh, zip tied it to the original harness. Now what I'm getting ready to do is verify the wires that are left over for turn signals. So for instance, I turn the key on, put the left turn on, and just using a simple test light, I can see that I've got the right wire here. So in this case, we've got two dark blue wires that we know are supposed to be for the right turn. So here's our dark blue on this side. So we know that this is gonna be our right turn on this side and now we've got left turn on the light blue wire so when you go to extend a wire if you don't have an appropriate um, connector you can just go ahead and make a cross out of them like so you can simply twist them together so that you make a straight line splice now when it once you're done with this you can go ahead and solder it and heat shrink it okay these factory j clips here have got to come out because the new panel gives you new screws and they give you new clips. So to get these out, just pull down on it gently with a screwdriver and just pull it straight out. The new ones will just slide right in and snap in place. In this case, uh, they've given us new J clips to install into the dash. You'll notice that as I put this up here, it's very loose. So simply take a pair of pliers, Squish this together just a little bit, tighten up the gap, and you can slide that up there and it will stay. So at this point with all of our connectors set up, uh, we're gonna go ahead and start plugging everything in. Uh, like we said before, we left a little bit of extra slack there, so if we ever do need to remove the panel for any reason, it'll be nice and easy. Uh, and we've got these great little insulated connectors there, assures us a, a, nice, uh, a nice connection um, and again, something that can be uh, easily removed for uh, servicing or, or whatever need may arise. So now that we've got everything hooked up, uh, we are using a temporary ground to go ahead and test everything uh, before we finalize the wiring. And uh, by the looks of it, 
seems to be uh, functioning as expected. All right, one area that we definitely practice what we preach on these vehicles is the grounding of the gauges. The accuracy of your gauge is only as good as its ground. And as we all well know, the best ground anywhere on the vehicle is the engine block. So right now, Corey's passing through the ground wire for me. And I've got that right there. And we will ground this up to the engine block. That's gonna give us the best possible result and the most accurate possible gauges. All right, so we've got a, uh, we've got a ring terminal here on our ground wire. We're gonna go ahead and uh, crimp this bad boy together. And Dave had this really cool uh, terminal that uh, has the heat shrink tubing built right into it. So we got a nice crimp there that's nice and solid. Take our handy dandy uh, torch here. Get, a, uh, get that nice and warm. And we'll have a good, nicely insulated connection. We're gonna take a uh, bolt stick that through and we're going to use one of the accessory bolt holes on the back of the uh, cylinder head here kind of got to feel around a little bit okay so we got it just about there and my uh, trusty breakaway uh, elbow there for torque specification and uh, we are good to go so we'll pop the valve cover back on our gauges are properly grounded and uh, we are just about wrapped up with this bad boy we got this uh, got this beast all buttoned up here uh, lights are working everything's beautiful uh, we're gonna get ready to calibrate the speedometer here okay so to tell the speedometer we're gonna calibrate it we're gonna press and hold the trip reset button and then start the vehicle now it's going to be very important when uh, that we continue to hold this button down till the needle goes all the way to 160, just like this. Okay, so now we're uh, sitting pretty at 160. When we're ready to calibrate, we're just going to tap the button once. It's going to drop to uh, the 12 o'clock position. We drive for two miles, uh, and at the end of our two-mile drive, we tap the button one more time. Bada bing, we are calibrated and in business. Good stuff. So, uh, huge thanks to uh, the good folks at ARS TV for having us out. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, please check us out on the web, www.autometer.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or our YouTube channel. Thank you so very much.